Hi, this is Dr. Mack at Pacific East Aquaculture. We're going to do a video today on our propagation, coral propagation. After all, we are called Pacific East Aquaculture. So we wanted to show you for some time now on what we do on propagation of corals. We're out in our greenhouse. You can see during the summer we keep the blue shade cloth on there. That's more for temperature control than anything else. Try to keep our water temp around um, 79, 80 degrees year round. And we're able to do that between the shade cloth and a large exhaust fan on one end that's tied into some power louvers that go on when the exhaust fan goes on. So you keep that air will go up over the top and out where the hot air rises out through that exhaust fan over there. So we're out in the greenhouse, so there's natural sunlight. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see some of the colorations. Um, color looks a lot better when you're out in the, uh, in the inside of the building with the artificial lighting. And out here we keep mostly our SPS corals. And you can see these are colonies that we're constantly fragging. We've had for many years this is a yellow stylophora. And a lot of folks would look at colonies out here and see, boy, these things look kind of ugly in their shape. And even on some of them on the color. Because again, we're out in the greenhouse, you can't really see the really nice colors. And when they're being cut constantly and regrowing, they don't look that great as far as shape. Here you can see an Acropora sarmentosa. It's green with red tips. You can see where I've taken a couple of frags recently. So usually on these colonies out here, I'll take one or two frags from them every few weeks, depending on the growth rate. And as they regrow, we'll take a few more frags. Now, all of these out here are the ones that we have up on our $15 and under frag page. 100% of those corals on that $15 and under page come from these colonies out here in our greenhouse. This is an Acropora echinata. Um, during different seasons out here in the greenhouse, the color will change quite a bit on these corals. This one had totally browned out after we put the shade cloth on this summer. And already now, within a few weeks of putting that shade cloth, you can see it, it's getting some nice blue tips and eventually most of that branch will be blue. So we do see a little change in coloration over time on some of the acros. You can see a big bird's nest colony. It's probably about the size of a basketball. We'll take frags from that. There's a blue polyp monopora denae. There's another acro where you can see. I'll take it out of the water. And again, you can see how the, it's quite misshapen over the years from taking so many frags from it. And we'll just kind of leave them for a while until they regrow enough where we can take some more frags. But some of the colors really come out over time here in the greenhouse that we would just never see under artificial lighting. Here's kind of a cool acropora that's like a greenish base color with uh, blue purple tips to the branches. I don't ever remember it being quite this nice coloration when the piece originally came in years ago. A lot of these are Solomon Island maricultured pieces that I started when I was out there. We set up a coral farm up in the Solomon Islands years ago and started bringing some corals in from there. A lot of these colonies are the maricultured. You can see this typical maricultured base from the Solomons. And these have been out here for many years now, and we have fragged them many, many times. Some more of the Solomon maricultured pieces we fragged. There's some, some nice red polyp monopora, green polyp bird's nest. This is the pumpkin pie samacora. Occasionally you'll see frags of this piece on our website. So again, what we do with the SPS corals is a little bit different than from the LPS corals in that we do keep some colonies of those that we frag from. Here are some frags from those very same colonies that eventually we'll be putting up on our what you see is what you get frag page. And so what we do here is we do allow some of these to fully encrust on the base before we sell them. And it's not that every piece we sell is really well encrusted, because they're not. Um, we will come out here and cut some frags, fresh cut them from these colonies, but these colonies, again, have been here for years. So it's not like a fresh cut frag from uh, a wild collected colony. Here you can see one that's been here for so long, it's completely encrusted on this PVC piece of pipe. It's a nice acropora, really bright kind of a lemon line with blue tips to it. And again, kind of an ugly shape because we're constantly cutting little frags 
off them. And you can see a lot of these pieces in here are just really weirdly shaped pieces. None of them are really huge because we're, again, constantly cutting frags off of them and don't really let them get quite that large. Here's one that's gotten big over the years, the Stylophora colony. So we've got all sorts of things out here as far as SPS. It's a neat little uh, lemonade, Pacillopora. We've got the really bright green polyp Stylophoras and the pink Stylophoras is a bright lime polyp Stylophora. In the same tank, we've got a built-in refugium with macroalgae. We've got some mangrove plants over here. We're just getting ready for a huge clam shipment. We've got a thousand clams coming in in the next few days. So we're just clearing out some of these vats. There's some zoanthid frags. This one has some of our zoanthid colonies that we frag from. So this is a picture out here in our greenhouse. We keep most of the SPS corals under the overhang here. This is the overhang here in our greenhouse. We've got a glass wall to the inside. This tank has quite a few LPS colonies. I'll try to show you a couple pieces here. I've got some nice lomophilias from Indonesia and Australia. Here's some frags that we've taken from them. They're kind of slow growers. So it's something we just kind of let sit and cook for a while and grow out. Some different zoanthids and fabias and favites and different things that we just have a few different frags of and these are some colonies that we have on the site for sale. So that's out here in our greenhouse. Let's go inside and take a look at some of our LPS colonies and chalices. As far as lighting inside we use mostly T5s. We started our facility about seven years ago with DHO fluorescence which you see here and we've slowly switched over to T5s and more recently eliminated all metal halides and went to LED lighting, which I really like the best, but we just don't have the funds to completely retrofit our facility. Nice thing with the, you can see the reflection here of the um, T5s. We can change the color on the bulbs, get just the right mix to get the right intensity, which is really important on these chalices because they're, they're not really bright light loving corals. Um, some of them you get to alter coloration as you increase the lighting. These are some nice watermelon chalices and unlike the SPS corals we do not keep large mother colonies of the chalices nor any of the other LPS corals for that matter. Um, we don't want to risk having one large colony and something happening to it. Works out much better for us over time. We figured out where we frag from the frag. So like a piece like this is ready to frag we would cut that up into like three or four pieces. Some of the smaller ones you would maybe see on our $15 and under page. Some of the larger pieces on our, either what you see is what you get or limited edition frag page. So again, we've got quite a few chalices. These are different watermelon chalices. Mummy eyes. There's one we call Orange Dream, has bright orange eyes. Here's another one that illustrates what I was talking about. We have some larger frags of this pink satin chalice and we have some frags that are ready to be sold. So this would be a saleable sized frag, about one inch or so. And these are larger, quote, parent colonies which are actually frags. You can see they have quite a few eyes and those are ready to be cut. Lots of different corals in this tank, different LPS corals. Pavona maldivensis, bright green. We've got Pavona maldivensis, bright orange over here. We've got some rainbow monopores. Again, nothing startling as far as huge parent colonies. We've got frags that we frag from. And you can see one here that we recently took a frag from. Here's some Christmas fabias that we've recently fragged. And there's the so-called parent colony, which is just a larger frag. Some Acan rotunda floras, interesting favias. Again, a lot more chalices. You can see some of the different ones here that we're ready to frag up. Lots of interesting colors. More chalice frags that we've recently fragged, letting them heal 
before we sell them, we always let those heal over. Here's some Cyphastrias. There's grape Cyphastria, purple color, meteor shower, or the poppy picking Cyphastria with the bright orange eyes, the red lava Cyphastrias. We grow a lot of the Cyphastrias. In this tank, we have Xenias, pulsing Xenia in here, followed by a huge rack of the Cyphastrias, and lots of chalices. I'll walk back over here See if I can show you. Here's another tank where we have some colonies. These are the alien eye chalices. They grow really rapidly. You can see this one here. I think I've shown on other videos. There's actually four separate frags that have completely grown in to together over time. We have a lot of these frags. They grow really rapidly. These are alien eye chalices. Some of them are quite interesting and we grow them on these rocks. They almost look like Monopora capricornus, the way they grow out in this kind of a swirling pattern. We get a lot more different frags that we grow, zoanthids, soft corals. We have some green cinularia. We attach these to rocks with toothpicks, um, all sorts of methods, a uh, fishing line. When they're firmly attached, then we cut them off the rocks and we're able to sell those. Here's some of our 15 and under corals, some of the same ones we just had outside. I'll just show you one or two of these. There's that Superman monopora we had outside, some Pacillopora, Stylophora, lots of different acros. All these come from those colonies we have outside. This tank we have some Euphelias that we're growing out and also selling frags of. There's a bunch of new frags that we just cut up from some Leptastrias and Blastomuses and Pavona maldivensis. These are our red Ganiaporas, actually quite hardy coral. I'll pick one up, get it to close up here, and you can see how this is completely encrusted onto this little plug. So they're really quite hardy. Very attractive coral. Some folks think that they're Impossible to keep alive and grow, but that's not true on the red ones. It would be true probably on the green ones. These are some of our limited edition corals in here. There are all sorts of different things, zoanthids, monophores, chalices, bird's nests. We've got the Ponape bird's nests. And here you'll see some frags of those up there on the 15 and under page. This is one of the parent colonies of those and another one. That's the Ponape bird's nest, a yellow-green branch with purple tips. We've got some really neon hammers that are kind of slow growers, but over the years we've gotten a fair number of polyps growing on those. Let me introduce you to Kyle. Here's our chief Hello. fragologist. <laughs> um, back here fragging some different things, as Dr. Mack was showing. Uh, we kind of on some things frag from frags. You can see this favia, how it's completely overgrown the plug and starting to grow under the rack, so we'll cut that into smaller frags. Uh, another Christmas uh, favia, and just some other things I'm fragging. Some Macordia humas, some pink clove polyps. That's a uh, cool uh, blue Blastomusa wells eye that we've got there that Kyle's going to frag. Very nice. And uh, we use this inland craft saw. It's made specifically for uh, fragging. It does a really good job for us. And uh, I'll start it on up. You can see Kyle's kind of rigged up a neat little LED light here that he can get that light shining right in there where he's cutting the piece. The saw works pretty well for us. There's some obvious maintenance that needs to be done because it's not really designed for cutting corals per se, but it does a good job. When I get in there and I start whacking away at too many corals, Kyle yells at me because I don't change the, the, uh, the guide for the blade as often as he does. But Kyle takes care of all of our propagation, he cuts the corals, he looks at them every day, checks for any kind of pests or any other problems, um, determines which ones need to be cut, which ones need to be hidden from me so I don't sell them too quickly. This is Kyle's personal tank here. We just keep a lot of different frags in there, some neat little frags that we want to grow out. Some nice chalices and zoos and some neat SPS. There's a nice Australian 
Acropora. Kyle likes some of the different macro algaes. These are neat. What are those called, Kyle? Dragon's tongue. Dragon's tongue. It's a really bright red with kind of orange tips to it. So that's kind of cool. That's a nice little tank. So that gives you a little bit of an overview of Pacific East aquaculture and our mariculture efforts. We have our farm there in the Solomon Islands that we funded over the years and we'll be starting up a new one soon in uh, Tahiti where we get the clams from. So again, check us out, Pacific East Aquaculture. You're welcome to come in at any time. We're open to the public. You can see some of the back room um, areas where we have all our um, equipment. We use geothermal um, heating and cooling for all the water and for the air conditioning and heating in the building. Uh, energy efficient pumps. We've got our own skimmers that we've designed and adapted over the years. Again, it's PacificEastAquaculture.com. We're located on the eastern shore of Maryland.